You know what's saddest is that I don't think I've seen anyone make a video on specifically how to play the game of One Night Ultimate Vampire, but now I'm gonna do it! But if you close your eyes... One Night Ultimate Vampire is a social deduction game for 3 to 10 players. It could be played on its own or at conjunctions with One Night Ultimate Werewolf and or One Night Ultimate Werewolf Daybreak. To start, players must agree on a certain amount of roles equal to 3 more than the amount of people playing. In other words, if 5 people were playing, you would need 8 roll cards. They must also set out the roll tokens needed for all the roles that are used in the game. After that, you must also shuffle the cards and let everybody pick a card and leave 3 in the center. Everybody's roll cards should be pointed towards the center in a tight circle or tight semicircle. Everybody must also make sure they have a mark of clarity face down in front of their card. Now, the game is ready to begin. We also recommend that users use the One Night Ultimate smartphone application to help out with the game. The device should be placed somewhere near the player so that way everybody could reach it. Any game of One Night Ultimate Vampire will include the Vampire team, which consists of the regular Vampire, the Count, the Master, and the Renfield. When the app or the announcer announces for the vampires to wake up, this will consist of not only the regular vampire, but the count and the master. All of the vampires together will give another player a mark of the vampire. This will allow the player to become a vampire, but still keep their special ability. For example, if the instigator has the mark of the vampire, the instigator will do her special ability, but is also a vampire. If someone is killed and has the mark of the vampire, the vampire team will lose. After the vampires wake up to give somebody the mark of the vampire, the cow will wake up a second time. When he wakes up on his own, he will give somebody the mark of the fear. If you have the mark of the fear, you may or may not be able to do your night action. For example, if the pickpocket woke up at the end of dusk and saw that he had the mark of the fear, he will not be able to do his action because he's too afraid. The master does not wake up a second time, but has a special ability. If another vampire votes to kill him, he will not be able to die. Instead, kill the player who has the second highest amount of votes greater than one. If no one besides the master receives more than one vote, then everybody will survive and the vampire team will still win. Now that the count has done his solo action, all of the vampires will point at the player who has the mark of the vampire while they close their eyes. The vampires will point at the player who has the mark of the vampire and the Renfield will give himself the mark of the bat. This mark in particular has no special effect, but will be an indicator that there is a Renfield. Before the vampires and the Renfield even do their night actions, the copycat must wake up. The copycat will look at one of the center cards and becomes that role. Now that he saw the Cupid, he will do that action when that role is called. If the copycat's card ever gets moved, that player will end up becoming a Cupid rather than just a plain copycat. Now that the vampires and the Renfield have done their night action, the disease will wake up. The disease will wake up and give another player on her left or her right a mark of the disease. Anyone who votes to kill the disease or the player with the mark of the disease will end up losing the game. The disease or the player with the mark of the disease will still die if they get enough votes. That means that if a vampire does not point at the disease or the person with the mark of the disease, they will still win because a villager has been killed. Next up is the Cupid. The Cupid will select two people to fall in love by giving each other a mark of the love. The Cupid may give herself one of the marks of love so that way she was no longer a vampire. If one player with the mark of the love dies, then the other person will die because of a broken heart. This means that if a villager falls in love with a vampire, the villager can sacrifice him or herself and kill the vampire at the same time. This will result in a villager win. The instigator will wake up after the cupid. If a player receives a mark of the traitor, that person can only win if someone else on his or her team is killed. If the player with the mark of the traitor is the only person on their team, the mark of the traitor will have no effect. This means that if a vampire had the mark of the traitor, that vampire could rat out any other vampires. The priest will be the next one to wake up after the instigator. The priest will clear himself and any other player with a mark of clarity. Anyone who has a mark of clarity will have no change in their game or status in the game. Before we introduce the rest of the villagers, we have the assassin team. 
The assassin is on his own team and will only win if his target is killed. To do this, the assassin will give another player a mark of the assassin. If the player with the mark of the assassin is killed, the assassin will win. If the player with the mark of the assassin is a vampire, not only will the assassin win, but the villagers will win. If the only player that dies is a villager with the mark of the assassin, the assassin and anyone on the vampire team will win. The apprentice assassin is on her own team. She wants to become the assassin and will only win if she kills the assassin. The apprentice assassin wants to kill the regular assassin in order to upgrade because she is tired of being an apprentice. The apprentice assassin will actually wake up and look for the regular assassin. The apprentice assassin will know who to kill in order to win. However, if there is no assassin, the apprentice assassin will take on the role of a regular assassin and will do the assassin's night action. The apprentice assassin at that point will only win if her target is killed. The assassin could turn himself into a tainer by giving himself the mark of the assassin. The assassin will not only gain an ally, aka the apprentice assassin, but could also work with the vampires so that way he can die. The vampires will win if the assassin or the apprentice assassin is killed. The vampires will win if the assassin and or the apprentice assassin are the only people killed. After the apprentice assassin does her night action, everybody will wake up and get to view their mark. Now that everybody has viewed their marks, everybody will close their eyes. This concludes the dusk phase of the game. Now, we enter the night phase. Anybody who receives the mark of the love will acknowledge each other after everybody has closed their eyes. If someone received the mark of the fear, the next three people will not be able to do their night action. Once the lovers have closed their eyes, the marksman will wake up. If the marksman does not have the mark of the fear, the marksman will be able to view the mark of one player and the card of another player. The marksman cannot view both the mark and the card of one player. The marksman will close his eyes and the pickpocket will wake up. The pickpocket is known as the little brother of the robber. The pickpocket will wake up and swap his own mark with another player's mark. The pickpocket will get to view his new mark. After the robber's little brother does his nine action, the gremlin will be the last person to wake up in this game. The gremlin can be like another troublemaker and swap the two cards. Or the gremlin can also swap two marks between two other players. The gremlin cannot move his own card or mark, and he will not be able to view the cards or marks that he moved. Once everybody does their night action, players will only have minutes to debate on who's a vampire, who's a villager, and who may be something else. This debate time is known as the day phase. During the day phase, everybody will have their eyes open. At the end of the discussion time, players will have a 3-2-1 count and will point at the player they want to kill. Players cannot point at themselves and they must also point when it says vote. And this concludes how to play One Night Old Spin Vampire and the reason why I talked in that voice pretty much the whole video was because I saw an awesome video where someone explained how to play One Night Ultimate Werewolf and One Night Ultimate Werewolf Daybreak in a voice kind of similar to that. So if you watch this and you are part of the voiceover of those videos that I'm talking about, please don't get offended. If anything, this was kind of more of a flattering way of mocking you, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but pretty much, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is, again, my first time doing a tutorial on how to play a game, so if you're confused about anything, that's okay. Just leave in the comments down below on what you're confused about, and I will gladly clarify anything. Or if you have any tips for videos like this, again, leave in the comments down below, and be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to go ahead and share this video as well. And while you're at it, be sure to click the subscribe button down below. I'm at 260 subscribers, and the goal is to get to 400 by the end of the year. If you want to check out my channel or go subscribe in another way, you can click up in the top left corner. If you want to check out my last video, aka the unboxing of this game, you can click in the bottom left corner. If you want to check out my last Musical.ly, you can click up in the top right. And if you want to check out my last find, you can click in the bottom right. And that's going to be the end of this video. And I will see you little masters. Ha ha ha. Later. Goodbye.